I would like to watch Iraq Invasion. Let's watch this. Final reaction today. Then we watch Actually, the, the, the Hoyfro video, and then after that, I... Hmm, I don't know. Maybe just play U4. I feel a bit lost today, to be honest. I don't know. Where you can browse a map of the world. Mao is still super popular in China as I was in there. Yeah, when, when I was in China, especially when we went to the villages, like out of the cities, everyone had the same Mao picture everywhere. The same, it was not never different. Always the same Mao picture. It was everywhere, man. In these godforsaken, ugly as betong houses, man, that, had, that didn't have a single plant in them. There was always a Mao picture, man. Depicting any time period in history, the Second World War, the early Park, modern yeah. era, or the Middle Ages. Click on any region of interest, and videos depicting history in that area at that time are brought to you instantly. This video is brought to you by my very own website, armchairhistory.tv. Oh, that's a good Armchair sponsor. Armchair History TV is the home of uncensored, ad-free, clickbait-free historical content. While our catalog comprises hundreds of the very best history videos on YouTube, it also features at the time of this recording 64 completely original videos exclusive to armchair history tv every what a interesting decision of him to do that don't you want these 64 videos on youtube to make money a week more and more originals you, are added Thank to you. our library created by dozens of different historical like content creators with videos. their own unique visual style and historical perspectives all of this is accessible for just $4.99 Thank, Thank you our mission is to build an incredible Jesus man everybody's telling us Life stories. I am Chinese living in the West, and the attitude of our grandparents is the most warped thing I've seen. They are happy to be peasants and live under the glory of Mao in poverty. So sad. I get what you're saying, man. Library of content produced because these exclusively videos the for Armchair History TV, which would normally suffer from YouTube censorship, demonetization, and view suppression. Support me and the history community okay, by no, using our code. No, I get fight. it. Now I get it, yeah. I, I don't know so much about YouTube, but every YouTuber I ever talk to, YouTube is cancer, YouTube is fucking you, YouTube is the biggest censoring, oh, we're so open-minded, I don't know. Back for half off of your first month. They're fucking all these people over, man. So, every time before we watch a video, I, I say what I know. The Iraq War, 2003. Oh god, I'm gonna make a fool out of myself. 9-11 happened and the George Bush administration was like, hey man, some some heads have to roll for this shit, man, okay? Uh, it seems like Al-Qaeda was responsible. Where's Al-Qaeda from? They're actually from Afghanistan, right? But then there was pictures shown in Senate. Was it pictures? That Iraq, aka Saddam Hussein, on possession of weapons of mass destruction. And then they felt like, hey, let's fuck that, let's fuck them up. Even though the CIA Amer slash America has installed Saddam Hussein many years before that. That's my take. And there was never any weapons of mass destruction. It was a fake war. They, they walked in with a fake war reason and never had to pay any retribution. The whole world, the European Union, oh! America let me suck your dick man no one cared at all and I remember I will never forget I watched an interview with Ahmadinejad and Larry King and Larry King is like Ahmadinejad man you have a nuke soon you're really the bad guy and, and Ahmadinejad a guy who the western media just showed as the most evil guy he's so bad Ahmadinejad was sitting there at Larry King he's like what the fuck are you talking about you are the ones torturing prisoners in Guantanamo Bay there's no judge there you guys invade countries without any fucking real proof but I'm the bad guy you guys have thousands of nukes I'm the bad guy blah 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 that was really interesting so yeah let's watch it no casuals, Betty, minus five stability. It is April 10th, 2003. F-16 fighters scream to life on a nearby tarmac, while C-130 cargo planes are loaded up with supplies. They just tried to get the a oil. A handful of soldiers play cards on a makeshift table. Try Explain one thing to me, though. I, I, I literally want to learn from you guys, because I, I never cared about this shit. How exactly do you get the oil? So you invade, you take Iraq, you're the boss there. And then you take the oil and ship it to the... US? How exactly do you get the oil? What exactly happens? Destroy the market. Ah, you like, you fuck their market. So if someone wants to buy oil, they buy from the US market. That makes sense, yeah.
Because if the Middle East is stabilized, that means they can openly sell their oil on the free market and destroy the American oil from Texas and shit. Shit, the whole world makes sense now. Dude, I just had a mind blow. That's why the Middle East is so fucked, because America has destabilized it. So they have, so they sell all the oil. Everything makes, oh God. Trying to distract oh. themselves from the anxiety in the air. Yeah. They are American, British, Australian, and Polish. All are exhausted by the long approach to the capital, but they know that the fighting is not over yet. As another plane departs for Baghdad, the Australian announces Royal Flush and lays down his cards. The others groan. He's won, but this is no ordinary game of poker. On each card, the face of a high-ranking Iraqi official is printed. They include generals, I just ministers, so many people. and on the ace of spades, the president <laughs> himself, Saddam Hussein. It is useful for the soldiers to familiarize themselves with these men. But like Saddam, I don't remember fully, but did he really got a trial and shit? Like I remember when they got Saddam, I was I wasn't the age I, I realized the stuff. I feel like younger, you'd probably never seen it, but Saddam man, they never they never let him defend himself. I never fucking I never heard his take on everything, man. They got him out of a fucking hole, shit. Fake trial? Yeah. And then they hang Soon them. Soon enough, they'll be hunting them. And wasn't 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 Saddam Hussein implemented by the American government? I, I don't know where I want to go with this. But wasn't... Didn't they... Oh, well, there was a story about this. Thank you, Fosti. Yeah, the CIA made him the boss. And then years later, they get him. It's always like this metaphor where America always looks for a scapegoat. So they open their CIA... Uh, uh, I, uh, what's it called? Refrigerator? And they're like, who's in there? Oh, Saddam Gaddafi. Who, who wants to get fucked today? Uh, Osama bin Laden, also CIA made. Al-Qaeda was CIA made to fight the Russians in Afghanistan. Hi, I'm Griffin Johnson, the armchair historian. Today, we will be it's covering because, yeah, the 2003 say I want to support Iraq against Iran. Iran. Sometimes referred to as the Second Gulf War, which saw hundreds of thousands of troops committed to an invasion that ended with the deposition of a dictator. While we will cover some of the political background and context of this much discussed conflict, this video will primarily focus on the combat maneuvers and objectives of the momentous invasion that sparked an eight-year occupation and insurgency. But first, if you haven't had- Saddam Hussein made his personal gods wear Darth Welder helmets because his son loved Star Wars. <laughs> it sounds like a fucking Seth Rogen movie. <laughs> chance to check out our video on the first Iraq war, here is a quick- Wasn't there a movie where they made fun of Saddam Hussein? Was it Hot Shots? There's a movie that makes fun of Saddam Hussein like crazy. Like he has a little dog and shit. Hot Shots, yeah, Hot Shots. Hot, sh hot Shots. Hot Shots 2. Hot Shots 2, yeah, great movie, Recap. man. With Charlie Sheen. The dictator? After I don't know it that ended one. with Iraqi forces being expelled from Kuwait, the US soldiers sought to protect Kurdish and Shiite minorities in Iraq. Americans protecting Kurds, what? What? By enforcing no fly oh, zones getting and launching boys. This shit is getting against strategic sites such as oil fields and military bases. But following Saddam Hussein's repeated refusal to cooperate with UN weapon inspectors, the, the, the United Act, States right? passed the Iraqi Liberation Act, which officially solidified the goal of regime change in the country. At the time, though, this act simply consisted of... And again, I'm, I'm a fucking amateur. I don't know shit, right? But the way America is doing regime changes has been for many years the CIA infiltrating it, like in South America, right? Nobody is invading South America. You fuck, you sent the CIA, and you fucked them over. So why do you need a full-scale invasion here? ...have provided millions of dollars to numerous... I mean, people always say it because of the money, right? All the rockets, all the military that all brings money in and shit. ...opposition groups in the country with the hope of toppling Saddam's government. Oil. But as it turned out, America's interventions in the Middle East... I cannot discuss educational topics or comedic representation of foreign terrorist organizations or drug trade organizations. Content featuring fleeting imagery relates to these groups. 
the beast had already sown the seeds of a Thank new you. conflict. Thank you, man. After the shocking events of President George W. Bush stood before. Do you have to bleep out 9 11? What? Where a wounded well, nation what? and officially declared that a new war was about to commence. A war. Thank you, town chief. A war on terrorism. Previous... He can't say terrorism? I love it. Eh? In the next hundred years, we're living in a fucking cyberpunk utopia where Google fucking tells us what to think and shit. I swear to God. America would now use preemptive force against any governments suspected of consorting with organizations, especially in accordance with what would be remembered as the Bush Doctrine. Within weeks, Jesus. U.S. forces had begun tearing apart Afghanistan in pursuit of <laughs> Laden. But when the infamous mastermind of the <laughs> attacks slipped away, the U.S. turned its attention the from Afghanistan the free, to Iraq, where for the past <laughs> 12 years, people in Saddam Hussein had any increasingly been perceived international as a threat court, to American hey, geostrategic interests in the region. Let's this shit on YouTube, this man. Wasn't My helped ass, by his refusal to cooperate with the United world, Nations. In late 2002, the United States began building a case against the Ba'athist government of Iraq and sought the support of the U.N. Security Council. Thank you, Luca. On top of the claimed ties... My dad worked, worked in Iraq for six months. He told me people want Saddam Hussein back and that they are sick of the foreign actions there. To Al Qaeda, the Bush administration had a laundry list of justifications for armed intervention, including the mistreatment of civilians and the aforementioned expulsion. I, I always wondered why the UN has blue helmets. You know, the, the reason for uh, gear on a soldier is, is, is um, what's the English word? To not be seen, right? To be tactical, tactical gear. But the blue helmet, man, an enemy sniper is gonna be like, hey, look, the blue, the, the blue guy in the field. My first to get combat shot better. deployment was in Iraq. I also love Thank the you, Frosty. stream, Tommy. Thank you, Frosty. Blue helmets means they're never in combat. Ah, okay. Of UN huh. weapons inspectors. Perhaps foreseeing how controversial these accusations would be in the future, many if you shoot, in the UN what, the Security helmet? Council you strenuously the objected to the proposed invasion, insisting that America pursue a diplomatic solution instead. Don't tell me they did it anyway. Even while the council debated, CIA teams were landing in Iraq to lay <laughs> the Americans groundwork for fuck. a full-scale What do you mean, UN? You little bitches? You can suck on our American balls. Saddam's regime <laughs> was doomed. Moving quickly, members of the Special Activities Division established the Peshmergas, or those who face death, are guerrilla forces operating in Kurdistan who opposed the Iraqi regime. Many of Saddam's war crimes were targeted at them. Contact with the Kurdish Peshmergas who opposed Saddam. Then they began identifying key elements of Iraqi leadership. This intelligence would be used to devastating effect in the opening days of the conflict, with surgical airstrikes killing many high-ranking officers. Additionally, the Special Activities Division captured a chemical weapons Pussy. factory. You know Toyota produces good vehicles when every insurgency uses them, K-E-K-W. Thank you, William, for the free. What is an, I don't know that word, insurgency. Is that like intelligence? What is it? What is it? Send, thank you. Thank you. Send boxes. Insurgency. What? Insur. It's a video game. An insurgency is a violent armed rebellion against authority. Ah, uh, uh, terrorists. Oh. Uh. Vice Secretary of State Colin Powell's okay, vivid okay. descriptions of mobile weapons laboratories on the backs of trucks and train cars, the facility was the only one of its kind found <laughs> during the entire Iraq war. They shoot anyway, they're Americans. Come these on. preemptive strikes did not help America's case to the UN, which continued to call for de-escalation. Key NATO members, such as France and Canada, were also highly vocal in condemning America's Wasn't aggression. Chancellor, man? Opposition crazy. around the Think world mounted culminating with the largest recorded protest in human history when on February 15th, 2003, over 6 million... Oh, I never heard of that. Wait, February 15th, 2003. I never heard of that. The largest protest in history. In my life anywhere. Never even heard of that. Finally took place. It amazed... New York. To be participants in a true step. 
it really shows how protests don't do anything, right? They didn't give two fucks about that protest. Just stay at home People and play World of Warcraft. People in 800 cities <laughs> gathered to protest the war. Nevertheless, in March Gay of 2003, you and versus the United States, States you say. and the Coalition of the Willing, which included the United Kingdom, Poland, and Australia, was among against others, Trump's began Iraq. massing Merkel troops to go in the with Bush. region. Unlike the war fought 12 years earlier, they would be advancing without UN approval. If protesting had effect, it wouldn't be loud. The invasion began yeah, slowly. Today, the huh? first phase consisted of numerous airstrikes and covert raids on targets within the country, with varying degrees of success. One of Varying the first degrees of success. Was the of what the fuck does that mean? On March 17th, when units of the British Special Air Service attacked a suspected chemical weapon site housed in a water treatment. Dude, that's like that's like real life Call of Duty. Yo, soap and fish and 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 peach and fucking knife. Drop at 2200. Enemy tangos 10. Take the chemical plant. That's fucking real life Call Facility of Duty, bro. Near the Syrian border. But the Iraqi defenders put up an unexpectedly spirited defense, and the commando team was forced to withdraw under heavy fire. Frustrated. You guys are super equipped. You have all the technology. You train your whole life. And you can't beat a bunch of fucking dudes in a chemical plant? Wow. You should let, let the Fortnite kids drop in. They might do better. They called in an what? airstrike leveling the entire facility and obliterating any potential evidence that chemical weapons were being held in the facility. <laughs> Another strike occurred two days later at a community oh, just Jesus. outside Baghdad the called Dura Farms. Believing that Saddam was visiting his sons in the area, Dude, how much the money they bomb in that country? The Holy area fuck, man! Thousand pounds of ordnance and your forty money. Jesus. in an attempt to wipe the Iraqi dictator off the face of the earth. I always something I, again. I'm I'm obviously just a monkey. I don't know. I always wonder. Wouldn't Saddam Hussein just give up there? Wouldn't he just? Oh fucking hell! Okay, calm down. I mean, America's coming. Like. Like, wouldn't he just give up? Wouldn't you just... Pussy. Wouldn't you just run and go to fucking Switzerland or some shit? My older brother died in the towers when I was free. After 9-11, schools in the US teach hardcore nationalism, US imperialism, and it's massively glorified. I love my country, but we're going down the starting road of World War II Germany. I want to leave the US soon. God damn. Pretty heavy words, man. Thank you, Lieutenant Doggy. He dug himself into a hole in the middle of the desert and never gave up until he was found in it. He thought he could do a Vietnam. However, a every hole. single satellite-guided warhead missed its target. And as a result, over a dozen civilians were injured and one killed. To complete the debacle, it was... A another question. Uh, again, I don't want to... Just a question. Is there tri Has there ever been trials for this? When, when the US military uh, makes... Um, what's that called? There's a name for it. There's a name for it. When you when you don't want to kill civilians, but you kill them. There has never been any trials. Not war crimes. Um, <clears throat> damage. Collateral damage. Like, isn't there like uh, the International Court of Human Rights and then Haag who has to investigate this stuff? Was there... I, I don't have no idea. I, never, I have no idea. Didn't they ever open a case and invited some fucking officers? And here at the night of February 9th, you guys hit 20 civilians. Can you explain that? The court court marshals. The USA doesn't recognize Den Haag. The US does not recognize that court? Oh, it makes sense. Otherwise, you'd all be in prison. <laughs> the US literally shut down... Uh, uh, later discovered that Saddam's last visit to the area had been nearly a decade ago. So wait, the USA wants all of NATO to put 5% of the GDP into uh, uh, arms, but they don't even respect our courts, man. Huh. Despite these issues, the main invasion was finally getting underway. The US Based put on the sanctions on all of those that tried. First Gulf two, uh, two percent, sorry, two percent. Most was observers five? had expected a lengthy period of aerial bombardment before any ground offensive. However, the coalition you, instead hope. opted to launch a rapid air and ground campaign that would avoid them. most urban areas and focus on decapitating the Iraqi government. This tactic, like later America called must have shock just and fucking awe, was chosen for two reasons. Run them over, First, man. American leaders assumed that if the command structure was eliminated, organized resistance would disintegrate. Second, it was hoped that the civilian population would support the Americans as liberators. 
Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld was particularly optimistic about this, stating, there will be Iraqis who offer not only to help us, but to help liberate the country and free the Iraqi people. It's the same arrogant arrogancy you saw in Vietnam. As we will see, this wasn't totally Thank the you, case. Get Lenin. On the night of March 19th, members of the 160th Airborne, known as the Night Stalkers, destroyed Night more than Stalkers. 70 Iraqi military outposts along the southern Jesus, and western man. borders. With the path cleared, coalition forces advanced from Kuwait into province. Since NATO members, member state Turkey refused to allow American troops to enter through their border in the north, coalition forces instead launched from Kuwait. Thank you, just, uh, just pin. One directed north and one south. A combined air... Dude, Erdogan would have let them in, right? Erdogan would have let them in and be like, hey, if you give me fucking some cities in the north, uh, we're gonna talk about this. Thank you, Paulano. An amphibious assault yeah, he would have let was them also in. launched on the Al Fal Peninsula on March 20th. That makes some good deals for some shit. With the goal of securing the critical oil infrastructure located there. American, British, and Polish commandos all worked tirelessly. Check Dude, out when the, film, the American the army goes secrets, ham. A true story Jesus. of a British spy trying to stop there. Invasion by revealing the war was illegal. Would be a film I would recommend for every kid to watch at school. Thank you for the free dollars, man. the offshore platforms before they could be sabotaged <coughs> by the defenders. Despite significant resistance from entrenched Iraqis supported by yes, artillery fire, the them. teams were able to secure the peninsula after a grueling three-day battle. Their efforts have, uh, likely four prevented six minutes. a major ecological disaster and saved billions of dollars worth of equipment that Saddam would otherwise have destroyed in a petty act of revenge. Unfortunately for the coalition, this would be the last bit for, for one good one PR here. they would receive for quite some time. As stuff. we'll see in the part two, which is out right now, the war for Iraq was just beginning. And even this initial taste of victory had been soured by the clumsy handling of Al Qaim and the disaster at Dura Farms. While coalition casualties remained minimal, intelligence failures would continue to plague future operations, muddying the overall picture of the war in Iraq to such an extent that many details remain unclear to this day. And I. Uh... And I, I'm gonna say something super edgy, but I don't care. I don't give two fucks. <clears throat> one sec, wait for the one year sub here with Synth. God damn it. I wanna say something. And I said it often on stream. It's very edgy. Germany did very bad things in the past. World War II, World War I, especially World War II, the Nazis. Atrocious. Bad. And all Germans feel the pressure of their way. Every German chat knows it. We feel that pressure, the Holocaust, all that shit. And you know, I, I'm fully, obviously, for this shame. Obviously. Totally. This is a bad thing, and we all have to think about it. No question. But as I grew up and started to use my own brain, I look around the world. I see Mao Zedong killing 20 million. Stalin killing 40 million. America doing whatever the fuck they want, man. Bah, 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 no fucking trial. And I always, as a young German, wondered, man, why are we the evil guys of the world? Yes, we did fucking atrocious things. But all these other guys do what they want and truck into everybody's fucking face, man. It's because victory writes, uh, the victor writes history. And as a German, I always felt very weird about that. I wear my, I wear my history as bad as it is and yeah i mean there's no point how bad it was but all around the world they do what the fuck they want man you know it's it's fucking ridiculous man that's because we lost it just shows how human perception is such a fucking hypocritical fake thing dude the first major engagement began on March 23rd, when a maintenance convoy of the 3rd U.S. Infantry Division took a wrong turn into Nasiriya, because Germany has the worst the internet. of the Iraqi 3rd Corps. Caught in a hastily prepared ambush, fifth... Among these casualties were Lori Pistiva, the first Native American woman to die while serving the U.S. Army, and Jessica Lynch, whose recovery a week later was highly publicized. Hmm. 15 of the 18 vehicles were destroyed by heavy weapons fire, and 18 U.S. soldiers were killed or captured. But the strategic bridges over Nasiriya's modestly named Saddam Canal were secured later that day after men from the Second Marine Division stormed the city, suffering heavy. And I always say, I feel like if you are in the Iraqi army, do you really want to wake up in the morning and go to war? 
Uh, Hassan, we have to wake up. Americans are coming. They have triple our technology. And he's just like, yeah, let's go, man. You must be like, fuck. I don't want to fight the Americans, man. Jeez, fuck that shit. Casualties from the determined Iraqi defenders. As if the intense urban combat wasn't enough, six Marines were also killed in a friendly fire incident when an A-10 warthog mistakenly attacked... <laughs> Fucking monkeys, eh? Dude, it's 2003, man. There's so much technology. Their amphibious vehicles. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Even a rocket? Finally, on the oh. evening of March 24th, the Marines oh, broke God. through and established... Maybe that's why Hassan woke up in the morning. Maybe today we can get more friendly fire a from perimeter Americans. perimeter north of the city, oh, which held God. up despite multiple counterattacks by Iraqi forces and the Fed Ayin Saddam militia, who were fanatical not only about Saddam, but apparently also about Darth Vader. Further north was the town of... That was the thing that someone chat said. His guards had Darth Vader helmets. <laughs> ja, which was situated close to <coughs> highways leading to the important cities of Karbala and Baghdad. Due to its strategic location, coalition forces decided not to bypass Najaf and instead chose to isolate the town out of fears it could become a staging area for attacks against American supply lines. To accomplish this, the coalition needed to capture the bridges to the north and south of the town. Elements of the 1st Brigade combat team attacked life? the Northern Bridge, codenamed Jenkins, in the early hours of March 25th, but made slow progress. Oh, one sec. Let's go. Let's go back. With Where were we? To highways leading to the important Penna cities here. of Karbala Thank you. Oi, Shiksi. Thank you, guys. Due to its strategic location, coalition forces decided not to bypass Najaf and instead chose to isolate the town out of fears it could become a staging area for attacks against American supply lines. To accomplish this, the coalition... I'm not confused. They are not taking the city out of fear it could attack supply lines. Did I understand that right? But she needed to capture the bridges to the north and south of the town. Thank you, Pope. Elements of the first Pope Brigade Pope combat team Pope attacked the northern bridge, codenamed. Dude, these graphics are so well done, man. Of March he, he must but be paying some serious graphic designers for this man. Reinforcements before dawn. They are taking the, the city off. eventually fought their way across the bridge, despite desperate attempts by Iraqi engineers to destroy it. Around the same time, U.S. forces advanced on the southern bridge, codenamed Objective Floyd. Resistance by both Fucking regular Floyd, military man, and militia forces was intense at both sites. On one occasion, an Iraqi drove a city bus at full speed into an M3 Bradley CFE. On March 20th... How, what, what kind of war is that, man? The one side has a fucking tank, and the other guy is driving a bus in the tank, dude. Jesus. Najaf was successfully like, encircled, and the attackers were man. relieved by the 101st Airborne. Over the next several days, the Americans swept through the town with tanks and infantry. The 101st deliberately left a single road out of the city open in the hope of using it as a kill zone for escaping troops. Oh, that's clever. You keep one road open in a city you took as a kill zone. Oof. On April 1st, Damn. some weary Iraqi soldiers took the bait and were ambushed by snipers and helicopter gunships and the oh, city geez. fell on April 4th. We won't even try to make them surrender, to dude. The south, Jeez. British forces had an unexpectedly difficult time taking Basra and its nearby port. Starting on March 27th, they whittled down the Iraqi garrison defending the valuable port over the course of two weeks. When on March 27th, British forces destroyed 14 Iraqi tanks in the largest British tank battle since World War II. I heard about that. I heard about that. Where did Iraqi tanks come from? Like, they didn't fucking design and engineer themselves, right? Where are Iraqi tanks from? Anyone know? You guys always know everything. Russia. Ah, uh, uh, Russia. Control of Soviet the vital Union. Waterway. Only 11 Britons had died, while the Iraqis had lost some 40 to 50 times that number. Jesus. How's that war, man? This is a massacre. Into the city, they were welcomed by jubilant locals, as predicted by U.S. Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld. Unfortunately, however, the crowds quickly turned into mobs of looters. <laughs> the final major engagement uh, before yeah. coalition forces arrived in Baghdad was at the Battle of Karbala Gap, a roughly 25-mile or 40-kilometer long strip of land flanked by the Euphrates and Rizaza rivers. Iraqi commanders were well aware of the Gap's strategic importance and had placed two divisions of the elite Republican Guard to block the Americans' advance. 
However, Saddam Hussein's son, Qusay, severely weakened the defense by redirecting some of them to the north which proved to be a fatal mistake. Good job, On April 1st, Good job. American troops broke through the gap, reaching the Euphrates at the city of Musaib. Though several Iraqi armored divisions counterattacked on the night of April 3rd, they were driven back by aircraft and- Bro, I mean, these Iraqis are getting annihilated. What the fuck are you gonna do? There's, there's some fucking transformer flying through the air, dropping shit on you? Rocket fire. What the, the hell are you gonna do, man? To the it's just it's mad to me that they're not giving up and just surrendering. Open, and if this would happen in Hoi 4, I'd just like capitulate. Okay, man, I got you. Began. While the Iraqi army had almost completely disintegrated at this point, the Ba'athist party militias holding the city did not hesitate to utilize underhanded tactics to slow the coalition advance. After Red extended air skirmishes rack. with the defenders, Colonel David Perkins launched a surprise thunder run of nearly 30 tanks thunder straight run. into the city on April 5th. Once behind enemy lines, the column came under intense fire from militiamen disguised as civilians. But Perkins was able to identify their defensive positions and execute a fighting withdrawal. U.S. Marines then stormed the Diala Bridge on the eastern side of the city and advanced along the... How many people... Isn't there a Wikipedia that tells you... Like, if you go to Wikipedia and you do Iraq War, you see all the casualties, right? How many... I actually have no idea. Like right here, I have no idea. Let me predict. I'm predicting. I'm predicting. 560 Americans dead. 20,000 Iraqis. So, right, the left side is USA, right side is Iraq. Dude! So, wait. The US lost? No, that's strength. The U.S. lost coalition forces. 5,000 U.S. Oh, that's a lot, actually. 179 U.K., 139 others. Missing and captured, blah, blah, blah. Wounded. Jesus, injured or disease. Contractors. What is that, like mercenaries? Fucking hell, that's bad company. And Iraq lost up to 10,000. 26,000. Jesus. Your total dead. Actually, kind of low for a war, right? If you think about it. Total dead, 35,000 Iraq, 25,000 coalition forces. But shit ton of people wounded, man. God damn. If you think about it, a small war in a way, right? And, um, man, Corona kills that fucking in a week, dude. <laughs> God damn. Northern bank of the Euphrates. Aware that this flank was almost entirely undefended, the nervous troops fired on any car refusing to halt out of fear of Yeah, well, I wanted to look at the whole war. I wanted to look at the whole carnage, war. Perkins led another thunder run into the heart of the capital on the 7th and rewarded himself by spending the night in one of Saddam's opulent <laughs> palaces. After a <laughs> final desperate defense by the militias, the city was finally captured on April 9th. There were some initial celebrations. One million civil uh, Fuck off. One million civilian deaths? You gotta be kidding me. Below 100k soldiers died, as we just sh shown on Wikipedia. Show me link. I don't, come on. How, how many civilians died in Iraq? Estimating war-related death poses many challenges. Experts distinguish between population-based studies, which extrapolate from random samples of population and body counts, which tally reported deaths and likely significantly underestimate casualties. Population-based studies produce estimates of the number of Iraq war casualties ranging from 150,000 violent deaths as of June 2006 to 1 million excess deaths per 2007 opinion research. Other survey-based studies Covering different time spans, find f almost 500,000 total deaths, 60% of them violent. In June 2011, the Iraq Body Count Project documents up to 200,000 violent civilian deaths through February 2020 at their table. All estimates of Iraq war casualties are disputed. So even if we take the lowest counts, which is 185k, or this is civilians, yes? Nah, this is, this is actually everything. Seems to have... Dude. The Iraq Family Health Service says 151,000. And then this guy is like, no, it's fucking four times that. Jesus. 
But in the end, whatever number is right, you see that the number of civilian deaths seems to be higher than military deaths. Thank you, Doctor, which is wow, sad, dude. Including widespread vandalism of statues and portraits depicting the now-defeated Saddam. However, as in Basra, massive waves of looting soon followed and continued small war until compared to Vietnam, Korea, and World War II, that's small. Defenders. But Saddam himself proved elusive and would not be captured for cities. many months. Coalition soldiers... Isn't there any fucking rules that when you go to war and bomb a country, you, you can't hit civilians? would spend their time securing the occupation and searching for other high-value government officials that had escaped the invasion. These graphics are but so good. But as the coalition searched for these officials, Nobody cares though, violence yeah. between Iraq's minority groups soon erupted. Like, I've seen these videos on YouTube, man. I'm not going to show them. Where, where these Americans are shooting people and they're literally saying, I think these are civilians. Oh, who cares? Fuck them up. <laughs> they fucking shoot everything. Are these guys in prison? I don't know. The only justified Iraq war was when they invaded Kuwait. Thank you for the sub. And insurgents began WikiLeaks showed to these assemble. videos, yeah. Where they literally say, I think this guy is just a dad and a son. Oh. Nonetheless, on May 1st, 2003, <coughs> off the coast of San Diego, President Bush made a dramatic Another loser bracket game? If there's a loser bracket the game right now, I would watch it. USS and then Abraham the call stream. The former Air National Guard aviator wore a flight suit for his televised address in front of a national audience. Standing in front of an enormous banner reading, Mission Accomplished, he announced the end of major combat operations in Iraq. At the time, the proclamation seemed reasonable. The Iraqi military... Dude, all you young kids need to send something. When I was young, we fought George Bush's hardcore. Dude, when I was fucking 15, 16, we were like, George Bush, fuck, that guy's crazy. And dude, and then years later, you have Trump coming in, and George Bush just seems like the smallest fucking kid, man. It's like there, there's always a new level achieved. Always a new level, man. in shambles, and Saddam Hussein had been reduced from an autocrat to a fugitive. But despite all appearances, the troubles were just beginning. For the next eight years, the coalition was engaged in a protracted counterinsurgency and suffered heavy casualties, while many thousands of civilians lost their lives. In 2003, the mission... The biggest loser of war always the fucking civilians, man. ...and the man. brief conventional phase of fighting was indeed finished. But much like in Afghanistan, the war in Iraq had only just begun. Hi, I'm Griffin Johnson, the armchair historian. Oh, and in today's episode, ah, we'll he be puts taking the whole group together. Is there a the loser bracket game? Subject of the Jeff, what are you talking about? Iraq war. This time, however, we will be covering the events from the Iraqi perspective by exploring how the Iraqi people reacted. Trump to the didn't get America to super war. Still, Trump killed more Americans than anywhere before. Oh, we'll ah, also look at the rise of extremism and sectarianism. There might be a winner bracket game. Oh, there might be a winner bracket game. And how all this set the there might be a winner bracket game? I'm fucking hyped, Wolfie. You tell me I'm there, man. And international I'd love to see that. It cannot be overemphasized how much of a shock the 2003 invasion was to the Iraqi people. Even when President George Bush gave Iraq his famous 48-hour ultimatum, Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein remained convinced that U.S. Might have forces lacked game. I would love the capacity but then I'm to wage more than I'm done, a done, limited man. military campaign against his country. Saddam and his generals were well aware of past American failures, such as the infamous Black Hawk Down incident during the Somali Civil War. Saddam uh, Black Hawk Down happened in Somalia. I always thought that I'm, I thought Black Hawk Down was... No, Black Hawk Down was Somalia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. That was a good movie, man. That was a sick movie, dude. So what am I doing? In Vietnam and hoped to replicate the success of the North Vietnamese by bogging down any invasion with defensive attritional warfare. With graphic scenes of destruction plastered across American TV screens, Saddam expected popular opinion to quickly turn against the country. I understand that. I, f I, will, I understand that Saddam would think like this. You know, like this is a new Vietnam. But, dude, it's not fucking 1960 Conflict anymore. Until coalition forces withdrew in disgrace. Yet, as we will see, many factors conspired to doom the Iraqi war effort long before the first shots were fired. 
Chief amongst these factors were Saddam's legendary paranoia, which made men like Joseph Stalin seem completely sane by comparison. <laughs> his direct preparations I for the so war were greatly level. surpassed by his efforts to completely lock down the Iraqi populace, pouring huge resources into the state security apparatus and surveillance programs. Many of the intelligence organizations that Saddam created were in fact tasked primarily with spying on each other. Being late to the blame game was fatal, and so these various Those agencies accused of treason would be tortured extensively in order to extract confessions and implicate other conspirators that could... Uh... Early chasing phantoms and inventing elaborate conspiracy theories. Naturally, the sentence for being accused in this web of lies and intrigue was always the same. Death. Predictably, this insanity had a profound effect on the military readiness of the country. Saddam valued loyalty above all other traits and divided his forces into three groups based on their perceived trustworthiness. These were the regular army, the Republican Guard, and finally, the Special Republican Guard, or SR. But how would you determine that? How would you determine, I don't know, this is like a test? Like, do you think Saddam Mustache is sexy? Yes, very sexy. Oh, you're SLG. How would you determine? How would Visits you look into someone's brain knowing how learned they are? Army groups were forbidden, and joint operations were unthinkable. One SRG Training commander recalled after the war, we never coordinated. I'm looking for information for that Winter Breaker game. I had no relation with any other units or fighting forces. No other units were ever allowed near our unit. No visits Only between SRG was permitted in, uh, permitted in the capital. In Saddam's mind, the only possible reason two officers of differing units would ever want to talk to each other would be to discuss a coup. Yet despite their highly dysfunctional leadership, the average Iraqi soldier strode into battle with a surprising degree of misplaced confidence. For years, the army was blasted with These religious rhetoric, promising that the thing, man. infidel Americans would soon fall before the sword of Islam. The prevailing attitude among the military was that the U.S. was a paper tiger, able to emit a terrifying roar, but incapable of enduring any serious losses. Since his successful coup in the late 1960s, Saddam Hussein had ruled Iraq at the head of the Arab Socialist Ba'athist Party, which functioned as the central government and controlled all aspects of state policy. Given his unusually long reign, an entire generation of Iraqis had grown up having experienced nothing but Saddam's dictatorship. So few could imagine a world without their tyrannical leader exercising absolute power over their daily lives. However, yeah, it's, it's crazy, right? When you have an autocratic regime like a dictatorship and and it actually survives 50, 60 years, so you literally have full generations that know nothing else. I think North Korea is a great example for that. These people know nothing else, so they can't miss anything else. That's the, that's the interesting thing. Sorry. Man. It is surprising how outright hostile the average Iraqi citizen was towards their supposed American liberators. For 12 years, America was only ever known as the distant oppressor, raining terror from the skies via airstrikes and subverting Iraqi culture by funding insurrectionist Doesn't the Middle East movements. think Meanwhile, about the that, few natives like that still? benefited from Western education experienced decades of villainization and dehumanization at the hands I mean, of the Biden just bombed Syria two days ago, right? Them Thank as you, Bruce Thumps. Who sold out their own country for American petrodollars. Many Iraqis were yes, further we still distrustful <laughs> of America Mustafa. after its behavior during the Iran-Iraq war. When and who in the end brings world peace? Tommy K on Twitch. Iraqis and in Americans East, together in chat, to together. His regime and before they always each other. I'm going to bomb you, give me your oil, Kuwait. bitch. All of Saddam's regime also possessed a natural air of legitimacy thanks to his close ties to Islam. This was Your parents only knew Honecker. The difference between my parents and East Germany was that they had their immediate neighbors in Germany and they saw their life. They had the radio. They got the packages. They saw how they lived and that's why they wanted it. If you really want to fucking put a society in complete lockdown, you, you can't let any outside influence in, man. If you show people how capitalism gives you cool shit like milk and cheese and jeans, they want to have that Due shit, to man. his extensive program of mosque building throughout Iraq and decades spent manipulating his citizens into a state of unquestioning religious devotion. Oh. Even those Muslims that hated their dictator still viewed his regime as inherently preferable to a democratic state, especially one subject to degenerate Western influences. This was a concept that the U.S. was simply unaccustomed to dealing with and led to many problems further down the line. 
a second and arguably far more important on a constant blip wasn't vietnam like that i don't know wasn't the average vietnamese person also like what the fuck are these fucking white americans doing here on a constant blip really factor that the u.s failed to consider was the ideological uh, the part of religion. between the uh. two major branches of islam the sunni not religiously and the, Shia. Uh. the reigning baathist party consisted primarily of sunni muslims while the neighboring iran had undergone a revolution in 1979 that resulted in the creation of a shia controlled islamic republic fearful of a dude uh, i say this is why i never understood this fucking shia sunni bullshit i know it's about some uncle from muhammad and shit but man you're fucking all muslims why are you fucking each other man jesus christ just come together and bring the salt of allah to the infidels no uh, are you sunni you uh, fucking dumb shit man a similar revolution in so iraq stupid. saddam brutally oppressed his shia subjects it's like, uh, I believe in Zaruman, I believe in Zauron. It's the fucking, it's some made up dumb shit and everybody goes fucking it. It's like orcs and Urukai fighting. Oh wait, uh, that happened too. Excluding yeah. them from positions of authority and conducting mass executions whenever there was any hint of rebellion. But such tyrannical measures, while effective in the short term, served only to stoke the fires of sectarian it's like Catholic violence Catholic Protestants. Yeah, it's just dumb shit, man. Almost from the but Catholics and Protestants make some sense because the Protestants tried to take power away from the church and all their fucking scams and shit. Is that the same in Sunni and Shia? The moment that U.S. forces stepped across the border. Much of the chaos following the invasion could have been avoided had the invading coalition forces drafted a feasible plan for bringing stability to the wake of a regime yeah. change. But what a useless... Wow, dumb is it to fight each other. Civil disorder quickly became Wolf, is there a winner back in the game? What did you say? Shia militant groups seeking vengeance on their former the city the oppressors. Troubles peaked really have in peace. the capital city of Baghdad, which of the prophet. fell into but, a state of What does that matter? Do they have different teachings or what? Shopkeeper Muhammad Abba. And why does this success matter? Just listen to Muhammad's word in the Quran and fuck his descendants. Imagine Jesus has a great great grand great granddaughter who says, you "Gotta use dog filters on Instagram." You listen to her? No, you listen to the boss man. You listen to Babu Jesus, not his shitty fucking ancestors. Who had fled Very the different city teachings. As the Americans approached, hmm. said, "When I got back to Baghdad, it was not the city I had left just a week before." You saw people walking everywhere carrying looted goods. Nowhere could you see any sign of law and order. No police, no military, no government, nothing. Everything had collapsed. The feelings of betrayal amongst the civilian population perhaps reached their peak after the Al Tabul raid in early 2004, when U.S. forces entered and ransacked a mosque whose imam had recently begun preaching anti-American rhetoric and providing Ooh, bomb don't like that stuff, man. to would-be insurgents. They don't like that stuff. Although a large cache of weapons and explosives were uncovered during the raid, Muslims across Iraq were horrified by the images of the desecrated holy place. I think I even remember these pictures. And copies of the sacred Oh, that wasn't very clever politically, man. Floor. To add insult to injury, the Americans offered no apology, instead merely hmm. publishing a list of the seized items and brushing off the affair as just another routine operation against Saddam's forces. Extremist clerics were quick to jump at this golden opportunity, decrying the occupiers as devils whose sole purpose was to wage a war against the faithful of Islam. <laughs> this is gonna sound weird. This all reminds me of Attack on Titan se in the final season. To like all these factions and they all, and they all hate each other and think they're the devils, but they're all the same in the end. As civilians, forcing American <laughs> soldiers to treat everyone as a potential threat. This created a vicious cycle of mutual distrust. Each act of bad faith on one side triggering retaliation by the other which only led to further escalation given how volatile the situation was coalition forces quickly announced a provisional government to provide a peaceful transition to democracy but when the members of the new iraqi governing council were revealed the public was shocked to discover that it consisted of 13 shias and only 10 sunnis five of whom were kurdish minorities to the Americans, this was simply a matter of proportional representation. After all, the Shias were the majority. However, to the Sunni loyalists of Iraq, the sight of the coalition raising up a government led by Shiites and Kurds was proof that Saddam's anti-Western rhetoric had been right all along. The situation was not what a fucked up situation man jesus by the behavior of some opportunistic Shia who quickly stepped in to fill the void left by their Sunni counterparts. To quote Sunni government employee Abu Mustafa, 
all of these senior officials had simply vanished, and soon we began to see a new sectarian order. People claiming to be doing the bidding of the Shiite religious authorities began to fill the posts left open by the vanished Baathists. They began verbally abusing and firing Sunnis or anyone they distrusted. Fortunately for America, there was still- That's where they threw a shoe at uh, George Bush, right? And he was ducking under. One organization under. that had a solid plan for dealing with the rising tensions in Iraq, the CIA. In the aftermath well, of the invasion, the CIA was in charge of tracking down and capturing as many members of the former Iraqi intelligence agencies as possible. Their efforts eventually succeeded when they rounded up a huge cabal of Ba'ath Party loyalists, many of whom openly admitted to torture, murder, and various criminal activities. Having listened carefully to the various testimonies made against these men, the CIA quickly concluded that there was only one reasonable course of action, to immediately offer them their jobs back and rebuild the core of Saddam's police state from the ground up. The CIA rationalized this decision with the logic that under Saddam, terrorist activity in the region had been kept to a minimum, and therefore there was nothing intrinsically wrong with his methods, only his goals. With all the worst aspects of the old regime now being restored by the very people claiming to be their liberators, the Iraqi people were finally pushed over the edge. An explosion of violence rocked the nation and the capital city was divided up into warring Sunni and Shia suburbs. The occupiers could do little but watch as chaos engulfed the nation. Their efforts what a to help majorly fucked up situation, man. ...of their own inability to understand Iraqi culture. This bitterness and mistrust created an atmosphere where coalition soldiers saw danger around every corner. The political vacuum left by Saddam's defeat also allowed many extremist organizations to gain a significant foothold in the Middle East, turning the country into a war zone between government forces and radical militias. By 2006, the violence had escalated into a full-scale war that saw the attempts of ethnic cleansing by. I mean, in a way, you could argue that the mistakes of uh, American politics in the Middle East left to the destabilization of the Middle East and the radicalization of groups there, aka like ISIS growing and terrorism happening, right? Both Sunnis and still, I want to give America some slack. How else would you have done it? Like, you know, like don't don't go there. No, you still have to go there. But this is such a fucking complex topic, such a complex culture and lands. Like, how the fuck you want to handle this shit, man? Shias, resulting in the displacement of several million people. To this day, Iraq. You would, as as a Western nation, you would like to create a democratic nation there that keeps everything in check, right? Which we're trying to do for years now in Afghanistan, and it doesn't work. Yeah, what, what a majorly fucked up situation, man. One of the most unstable countries on Earth, with American forces being withdrawn. Stay in your country? Stay in your country would mean, would you better have a dictator like Saddam, but no terrorism and stability? But he's like doing some bad shit? Thank you, random number sequence. Or do you take down someone like Saddam and let the terrorists take over? It's, it's, I don't think there's an easy answer to that that the Twitch can easily find. The growing power of ISIS do we have a winner bracket game or not? What's going on? Faced with endless threats, I was both promised. external and internal, the fragile democratic state, now ruling the nation, is constantly hamstrung by the meddling of foreign intelligence agencies and the deep bitter divisions amongst its populace. But with ISIS finally I'm losing its promise. territory in the country in 2017, some still cling Just to the, the ultimate hope empire. that Iraq may But then if you have like a, if you have a stable, strong nation in the Middle East, then the West, America doesn't want that because... Oh, danke schön. Danke. Ich komme jetzt, glaube ich, auch gleich raus. Um, and then you don't want that, and you know... Just a majorly fucked up situation. And in the end, who's the big loser? The civilians, man. Normal fucking dudes, man. Mm -hmm. They just want to hang out and have a life, and so, they just get bombed every fucking ten years. Left to be done. Great video, man. Great fucking video. This guy is fucking epic, man. It's a privilege to watch these videos. Uh, yeah, yeah, damn. Interesting. I'm learning a lot from these videos. I'm learning a shit ton.